combinations. <laughs> Secret celebrities. Oh. Just want to touch base. Paired up with an expert. Boom! <laughs> what? <laughs> and a classic car. No hands! And their mission to scar Britain for antiques. My office. Now. The aim? To make the biggest oh. profit at auction. But it's no easy ride. <laughs> Who will find a hidden gem? <laughs> Like that. Who will take the biggest oh. risk? This could end in disaster. Will anybody follow expert <laughs> advice? But I love this. How would you buy something you're not going to use? <laughs> there will be worthy winners and valiant losers. No, I don't want to shake hands. Put your pedal to the metal. Uh, let me get out of first gear. This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Yeah. Today, we'll be crossing the Cotswolds, not the Andes, with two friends who happen to be very fine actresses. How are you feeling in the passenger seat with me? Hanging on to this seatbelt. <laughs> right. I know. Just acting, I think. Yep, it's Sharon Morn and Tina Hobley. How lovely. And we're in the country, antique shopping. So you're going to be hanging out with antiques other than me today. <laughs> Ooh. Those two have been long familiar faces on our TV screens, with Tina pulling pints in The Rogue's Return and Sharon appearing in commercial breaks. I yeah. loved those adverts. They were fantastic. I really do hope that they bring them back one day. Yeah, me too. They first met when they co-starred in top BBC medical drama Holby City. And I ended up having an affair with your husband, I think, didn't I? You did. We had a big cat fight. I quite liked having a cat fight. You with told you. me that Robert Powell wasn't my father after all those years. Yeah, but Robert Powell was never your real father, darling. I oh, know. Not in real life. <laughs> <laughs> sure to be well acquainted with Holby Games on will be our experts, antiquers James Braxton and Raj Bisram. Raj, you, you've never trained as a doctor, have you? White coat and stethoscope, badge of office, aren't they? Well, I think with my medical complaints, I should definitely yeah, hire. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to need a nurse with me. <laughs> oh, plenty of cream, I hope. At least they know a bit about vintage cars, like this 1965 Jag Mark II. When they finished the Mark One, they said, yeah. we want to build another one. Yeah. And we want to give it more space, more pace, <laughs> and more grace. Or even grace, pace, and space. Could have been that way around. <laughs> Mind you, that 1967 Volvo's pretty sprightly too, which should please car fan Tina. I love speed. I love speed, speed, speed. speed. So, second gear. Yes, this is a little... Bingo. Uh, I did it, I did it. Don't, don't, don't be funny about it. I did it. Good morning, well, well done. Well done, Sharon, well done. <laughs> so, with £400 each, plus a tiger in their tank, let's get them teamed up and on the road. Hello. 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 How are you, James? Sharon. Hello, lovely Sharon. To meet you. Hello. Hello, Tina. Hello, lovely to Hello, meet Tina. you. I'm Raj. Meet your competition. Oh. Sharon. <laughs> Hello, Sharon. How are you? Good lovely to see to you. you. Tina, Hello, James. To meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, James. You are looking at the winners. Oh, oh. no, no, no. Oh. The winners are well. the first there. <laughs> yes. oh, oh, go. <laughs> okay, baby. Bye, bye bye. Bye. Let's catch the shops. Those two don't hang about, do they? <laughs> Today's trip will end up beside the seaside at an auction in Brighton. But there's an awful lot of shopping around Gloucestershire before then, starting out in the county city. What do you like at the haggle? The haggle? Is there a bit of Marrakesh in you? In Marrakesh there is, but, I yeah. mean, do you think the English are any good at it? I think we should be. So I'll haggle today if you want me to haggle. Shall I haggle? Yeah, I want you to haggle. Sounds like our experts are taking their job very seriously. For a collector or someone who's passionate about antiques, buying something that they can live with, that's, that's the beauty. And do you think that's what we should do today, then? I should uh, no. be draw... <laughs> no. Our first celebrity to dip toe into water is Tina in the port city of Gloucester, down by the docks. Oh, yes. This is good. Here we go. Yeah. Upstairs, downstairs. Yeah. You go one way, I'll go the other. OK. If you see anything you like, give me a shout, yeah? Oh, I will. OK, right. see you in a second. I wonder if Tina's experience in medical drama might pay off. I like that. They're always tense affairs, aren't they? You're the coin man, aren't you? Medals. Medals, medals. Medals, not coins. Um... How's our unflappable consultant getting on? I do like that. Ticket price is £95. I think I'm going to have to call Tina. Tina? What poise, eh? Oh, I like this. So it's an antique desk stool. Look at that, and it's all attached. £40. If I could get it for 20 
I'm sure we could sell it for more than that. It suits you, but you mustn't be buying anything without checking on me price-wise. There's a lot of them around, and I don't think they're great, great sellers. Oh, OK. Fine. Well, that's why you're here. We'll leave that. <laughs> Very stern, Raj. His lamps won on the wish list, and now Tina's grabbed Dealer Vic. Leather jewellery box. That's quite nice. It's pretty. Very pretty, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's only got a key as well. Look. Oh, it gets better. It's 95 quid. Okay. And you can have it for 60 quid. Really? OK, yep. good. Yeah, and that, I'm sure. Is the right key? Yep. <gasps> I like that. Really? You've got a very old London maker lock. And I can have it for 60? 60 quid will do. All right. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, I have to consult my expert, though. Yes, you're welcome. I'm not sure she wants to. <laughs> what about our other lean antiquing machine? Oh, my gosh, we've got a little Cotswold moment. Breathe in. That's it, lovely. He's, He's obviously that before, used to it, yeah. He? Well, he has. <laughs> they seem to be navigating the hills rather nicely. <sighs> Motoring to their first shop in Winchcombe. The Cotswold town on the River Isborne. A very nicely park. Look at that. Aren't we lucky bunnies? Yeah, it's a popular place, all right. First antique shop. Isn't this exciting? Winchcombe Antiques. I am quite excited, actually. Yeah. It's all about fate. Yes. Something will find us. Well, let's first find the proprietor. Here's our man. Hello there. Hello. Richard. I'm Sharon. Lovely nice to, to meet you, you Richard. Good to Hello, you. James. Hello there, James. Good to meet you. Well, that's very nice. I like to be surrounded by Rosewood. Yes, I like yeah. to be surrounded by men. <laughs> <laughs> and I am. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> now, antiques. There's definitely enough here, I'd say. Oh, I love a box. Look at this gorgeous oak stationery box. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Look how lovely that is. All your filing, all your envelopes, all your letter-headed paper, your ink, your inkwells. This is for your pens. When I was at school, you had to write with pen and ink. You couldn't write with biro, as they called it. But I don't know if there's a market for it. My, I have to keep reminding myself, not just what I like, but how I can make money. Ticket price, £78. I absolutely love this. It's described as a Victorian cylinder cupboard. I don't know what the Victorians did with a cylinder cupboard, but what I would do with this, this is very Soho House. That's a miniature drinks cupboard, isn't it? It's so cool. And a beautiful decanter on top, perhaps. But it's expensive. It's uh, £225. Sharon's already up to speed. What's James got there? Three early coloured engravings of Brighton scenes. This first one here is, is known as King's Road Brighton, but rather fun. On the beach, they've got the fish market, and Brighton Fish Market used to be on the shingle. And then we've got another one here. This is the Chain Pier. This was built by a chap called Captain Samuel Brown, who built early suspension bridges, and this predates Clifton Suspension Bridge. And then this is the other one here. we got here the Victorian fountain erected in... 1846, so it must be post-1846. They're nice, they're rosewood, they've got gilt slips, original frames. What have we got? We've got £118. Brighton scenes were selling in Brighton. I think that has our name on them. Could be a canny find. Sewing machine. I used to make all my own clothes when I was a young girl. It's the only way I could get the clothes I wanted to buy in the slums of Liverpool. So I had a hand sewing machine, rather like that one. Mine was a singer. See, the thing is, I don't know what is basically second-hand and what is antique. That is a very good question. Over in Gloucester, things have taken a military turn. This looks rather interesting. It looks like an army kit, isn't it? So 1944, it says. How wonderful. There's a grooming kit, isn't it? And it's got the paperwork to go with it. Look! Oh, I like this. And we're going to be selling in Brighton, and I think... This is quite trendy. Ticket price, £55, though. So the whole kit is there, it's complete. The brushes, the trimmers, the combs and the scissors. Well, let's see what Raj makes of it. If you could get him down to, say, 20... Yes. ..then I think that that would be quite saleable. Do you? Uh, yeah. Right, uh, let's know. go and see if I can do a deal, well, then. Should we, should we leave it oh. for the moment? Because right. I want it before we do a deal. Or you want to do a deal? I know you want to do a deal. Can I show you some things? Yes, of course. OK, I've got a couple of things. Come this way, come, come this way. Raj's list includes a tunic, like the one Tina admired earlier, and that lamp. What do you think? 
Well, I think I've thrown something away like that, maybe, last week. <laughs> what a reaction. The angle poison lamp was invented in the early 1930s, and this one's by Terry and Sons, who soon began manufacturing it under licence. This kind of stuff is really in vogue at the yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this at auction could make 70 to 100 pounds, no problem at all. Now, there's 95 pounds on the ticket. But, again, if we could get this yeah. at 50 pounds, yeah. Snap it off the hands. Right. Absolutely, this would be a good deal. Would it? And the other thing I, I found... I love this. Do you? Yes. Well, I love it too. Yes. It's a tunic of the glorious Gloucester's Regiment. Ticket price, £120. Right now, yes. I'm going to give you a challenge, OK? I want you to go in there and get these three items, OK, for £100. Crikey, Raj. Let's see what we can do. Absolutely. Now, is Vic there, Vic? Oh, yes, and Rob. Look. Hi, guys. Hi, Rob. G'day. And Vic. And Vic. Yes. OK, so I'm very excited about the couple of items we found. So the jacket, the beautiful Gloucester. Gloucester Regiment yes. Bandsman's jacket. we love it. But what's the best price you could do for It'll probably me? come down to £60. £60, thank you. Now, we love the lamp. Yes. It's an industrial lamp. It's very on trend at the moment. We it think is. we could do a lot with that. But what's the best price on that? It belongs to another deed. But we'll take 50 quid Thank for it. Thank you very yes. much. Now, yep. there's just one little thing that caught my eye. It's the army barber's kit. I think 20 would be great for me on that. OK, then we'll call the 25. 25. So what are we up to, Raj? Uh, 60, so... 50. That's 110. And 25. It's 135. So if you can get another fiver off that and a fiver off the jacket, then I think, for the sake of a tenner, we're at 125. I think that's a fair deal. See what they could do. What do you think, gentlemen? You know, you said I had a nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> say what it can again. I, say? I think. Um... <laughs> How about giving me it for 20, the barber's kit? We can do and that. I'll, I'll take it away. Yeah, really? We can, do, we can do that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, can I, can so... I make it 55 on the jacket? And I tell you, we're going to win this. I reckon you'll win it anyway, because you've got the best regiment in the British Army. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can even try the hat on if you like. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it all. Does it suit me, sir? It, it so definitely certain. suits you. Those eyes. It my definitely God. suits you. It uh, definitely yes. suits you. You think you could come down another fiver for me? I could probably do that for you. Gentlemen, <gasps> you are fantastic. Oh, Shake delighted. Your Thank you. We know. Good yeah. doing business with you. Big. Brilliant. <laughs> well, that was quite a big deal. And one lady could diver. Oh, look at that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, all right? Thank you. Now, while those two stick the swag in the jag... So pleased with what we've got. Brilliant things. Yes! I mean, they did really well. Where are we in Winchcombe? Georgian bird feeder. Oh, it, it, it's for in a bird cage. Little tiny bird feeder for in a bird cage when everyone had a little, little budgerigar. I've never seen that before. Isn't that sweet? Very cheap. It's £15 for anybody who has a budgie. Of course, she's good. Time for a bit of show and tell, I reckon. Yeah. I spotted these pictures and, you know, the dear old humble engraving. And the first one is the Steen in Brighton. Oh, my goodness. So but I love authentic. this one. This, <gasps> is, this is the front at Brighton. Mm. And then you've got bathing machines for other fun. Bathing machine? Yeah, maybe to preserve your modesty. Oh, yeah. So you've undressed in there, and then the machine was taken into the water, and then you jumped out. Oh, wow. So you've got these three things here, nicely framed in rosewood. They're a bit yesteryear. So what do we think about them being a bit yesteryear? Well, it's going to brighten. There will be some still people harking back to the past, won't there? You don't think it's a bit cold to Newcastle? No, because, actually, I don't think they have much relevance up here. I think they have more relevance yeah, in Brighton, do. don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, they have do. Have you found anything? You bet she has. Oh, isn't that lovely? So, a station... Stationary. Do you think all your envelopes... All your envelopes, oh. your letter-headed paper, your ink, look at this beautiful little inkwell and ink thing, and your pens here. And the lid, does it you... open? I didn't know it had the lid. And then this may open. Does that I, open? Oh, no. I did, I did think that. Drawer. I didn't have the courage you had. How much did they cost? 70-something. That sounds a bit cheap. I think it's good value. God, you're very good, Sharon. This extraordinary little thing yeah. here... Cylindrical washstand. Cylinder cupboard. Yeah. It was a cylinder wash tub. A washstand, yeah. It was a washstand, that's what it was. Washstand. But that's why it was marble. Ah, that's so why it's marble. So you would have put, had your wash basin there and then you could have poured it on and then you'd... you'd Wash. It's quite a plain one because this is made of pine. Do you like that? I like cylindrical things because it has novelty. It has it's novelty. Different. Bends the knees. 
and off to see Richard. We need to get these things as cheaply as we can. Is there a deal to be done? Something, what, what's the lowest you could do on that? This oak station. Uh, yeah, well, that, I haven't got much room for manoeuvre. Um, so it's 78 at present, and the best is, is literally just 70 I can do. Now, the ticket price on this was £225, remember? This very expensive, uh, <laughs> very, very expensive drinks cabinet. What's your best price on this? I'd probably have to give the chap a call. So, well, what's he got on it? A lot call. of money. He's got a lot of money. It's pie. Yes, yeah, so the best I can do is 200 without speaking to him, so yeah. I need to give him a shout. Could you give him a shout? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Could you give him a no, shout? but really, he'd need to literally know it would need to be half that. I'll try. What about yeah, these yeah. mid 19th century yeah. pictures? Well, they are Brighton, aren't they? So yeah. that's ideal for you. Yeah, but yeah. the best I can do on that is 90. 90. Yeah, 30 pounds a piece. Doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> but while Richard gets on the phone, Sharon has one more little suggestion. Do you know what that is? I don't know what that is. This is a Georgian bird feeder. I love it. For a cage, for the bird cage, for your little beloved budgie. Isn't that lovely? Isn't it lovely? And you know what? It's Georgian. I've never seen anything like it before. I, 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 nor have I. Do you like it? I really like it. Oh, that. I'm so excited. Really like it. I found it. But with the other dealer out of reach, let's focus here. So, definitely having that. Good. I think it's a choice between that or that. Well, obviously, Brighton. We're going. I, I think we should take up Punt. Mm. We've got two proper antiques. You like that, don't you? I love it. So it's happy about very that. Very clever. <laughs> oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with an expert. I'm, I, I learn fast. I'm on my Come way. on, you learn very fast. <laughs> We're going to have those two, Richard. No problem at all. Those Nicely two. done. And One each. £105 to pay. That's it, Sharon. Milk it. 80, 90, <laughs> 100. I believe you might owe me a £5 note. Oh, she's such a performer. As is her friend and rival. I have known Sharon for about 12 years. Uh, she came on Holby to play my mother. And whenever I can get that in, particularly on television, <laughs> and then we became dearest, dearest friends. If I took one thing away from Holby, it was meeting Sharon. These days, Tina has yet another string to her bow, radio. I don't know how I've got into this world, but I do a weekday show, drive time show, so that's Monday to Friday, and then I do a Sunday show, which I've been doing for the last three years. And I absolutely love it. What do you think would be the ideal music for us to be oh, playing? Oh, now what would I play to go with this beauty? I think she deserves a bit of Nina Simone. Would you like to hear that? Yep. <laughs> She's very smooth. <laughs> You're very smooth. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's another reason Tina's a hit on drive time. She's also a keen motor racing fan with a license, which explains why they're currently heading deep into the Cotswolds towards Prescott Hill to learn about one of the very oldest forms of motorsport, speed hill climbing. This course, a throwback to the more rudimentary early days, is basically the drive to an old manor house, as well as being the home of the Bugatti Owners Club. Lovely. Oh, Stuart, look at that. Yeah, we're very lucky to have this car. Stuart Webster is the general manager. So our Bugattis from the 20s and 30s, are they actually raced here still today? Yes, we're the Bugatti Owners Club and we like to show very much the history of the car. So yes, we still have cars which uh, were born 90 years ago, which are still raced here today. Do you have to own a Bugatti to be a member of the club? Absolutely not. We have 2,200 members today. Of our members, there's about 200 of them that own a Bugatti. But we then have the person who likes to come to Prescott to watch the motor racing as well. Racing at Prescott Hill goes back almost 80 years, although the sport itself is even older, dating from a time around the turn of the century when racers were first encouraged to keep off public roads. It's a short and very fast time trial. Circuit racing, the start point and the finish point are exactly the same place. On a hill climb, you go from one point and you finish at a completely different point. And that was part of the challenge, I guess, taking something which looked like an easy thing to do but turns into something which is really quite technical and quite difficult to do. How long is the actual course itself? No, it's 1,127 yards, and we, 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 of course, as we're old, we don't work in metres, <laughs> we work in yards, so 1,127 right, yards. easy on the old. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was referring to me, Mike. <laughs> Without doubt. So the course record is 35.51 seconds, 1,127 yards, two hairpins, uh, and a uh, near hairpin at the finish line as well, which I think will catch your breath when you go around it, because 
because it looks like you're going off the end of the world. I can't yeah. wait. Yes. When can we get going? Well, how about right now? With youthful Bugatti driver Piers at the wheel. So, what do you want me to do? If we pump that lever, it'll pump air into the fuel tank, which will force fuel through to the carburetor. So you want to pump away as hard as you possibly can. That'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. We'll switch okay. the magneto on and press the starter. Right, let's go for it. Okay. Sterling Moss competed in his very first trial here in 1948. <laughs> he came fourth. It's quite a tricky car to drive because it's a crash gearbox, which means you have to match your revs to your road speed. So if I change gear. If you get a side crunch, it means you haven't quite got it absolutely right. That was a good one. You can see how some of the greats honed their skills up here. I think it's the best noise in the world. It is. It's, um, it, every time it starts, it's, uh, it really does get the blood flowing. This 37A Bugatti is one of only three left in the world. 82 years old and it's still as good as the day it ever left the factory, so they certainly paid them for the last. Right. Now, what does Murray Walker say whenever they cross the line? But while Tina's been chasing that course record, our other pair have been urging the Volvo to new heights. Birdlip Hill is one of the steepest hills. I'm joking. <laughs> Relax! You're heading the other way, taking our route down to the valleys of Stroud and another chance to strike a shopping blow. Is Tina very competitive? Oh, she's so competitive. She will want to win. Do you think we'll win? Of course we'll win. <laughs> is the right answer. Malt house! Yay! There used to be a brewery here. Now, an antique centre with over 100 dealers, but it's getting late. There's a lovely guitar here, rock star owned, electric guitar. Hey, I've no... I have been expecting you, Mr Bond. Sharon seems the more urgent, I think. I rather... I think they're the coolest, beautiful Art Deco shape. And if they can work, what cool um, soap dispensers they would be. Yeah. And body cream in the bathroom. But on the other hand, I think barber shops are having a real renaissance, aren't they? But that would mean a barber would have to buy them. I don't see why not. And it's still in there. Look at that. This is completely what you call authentic. Yeah, it looks too good authentic. to be true, doesn't it? What is on the price tag? The price tag says £145, wow. which is a lot of money, from a barber shop circa 1940. Great item, aren't they? And the fact that it works. Look and at it that. works. Very Look at the nice resistance. Action. Oh, yeah. Let's have a word then. Hello, James. Mark. Mark. Hey, Mark. Hello. Sharon. Nice to meet you. Nice very to meet you good. Too. Very good. We, we like these. Oh. They're a lovely, unique pair. The only thing we hate about them is the price. So there's a little, there's a little movement within there. How little is a little? I can give you ten percent off the price. Fourteen okay. quid. Um, that's not immediately attractive, Mark. Mm. Would it be worth ringing the trader? Do you think he might do 100? I would peel off 100 if, if you... If you're, do you want to you see if he, if he would allow us to peel off 100? You have to give me a few moments. They do seem rather set on those, whatever the outcome of the call. I've spoken with the dealer and the best price is 120. Do you think he might go nearer the 100? I don't think he will, no. He don't. I also know they were in one barber shop and that's in the Forest of Dean all their life. Really? They had obviously a clientele that still used bull cream. Yes. You don't, do you? I haven't got any hair. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. What's the word for when you get the whole history of a, of a piece of art? Um, the provenance. The provenance. Yeah. Maybe that would enrich the sale. It would. And I think Brighton's a good place for it. Should we do it? I would shake the man's hand. That's a knuckle duster. Oh, I don't no, know. Blimey, O'Reilly, watch out. So what, what are you going to do with these? <laughs> is this a hand to shake or is this a <laughs> hand, <laughs> hand to shake? <laughs> so with £120 dispensed, it's time for our couples to head for the hills. Chugga, chugga, chug. We're getting there. Push, push. <laughs> Mighty night, then. Next day, the local fauna's looking a lot more familiar. Pigs! Pigs! Look at them. It's a Gloucester Old Spot and a donkey. It's the biggest Gloucester Old Spot I've ever seen. Yesterday, Tina managed to bag a military barber's kit, a balanced arm lamp, and a Gloucestershire regiment tunic. 
You got the best regiment in the British Army. Ah. <laughs> so she still has two hundred and seventy-five pounds for today's buys. Whilst Sharon picked up two hair cream dispensers, three Brighton engravings, and a Georgian bird feeder. I really like that. Oh, I'm so excited. Really like that. I found it. I should tweet it. <laughs> Leaving 175 for whatever she might wish yet to acquire. How's your bargaining skills? Terrible. Terrible. Both Mine were fabulous. So have you got loads and loads and loads of money left? I'm telling you. <laughs> What's the expert opinion then? Lovely Sharon. She's got a good eye for, for, for design. She found two fabulous things yesterday. Tina, too, really. And as far as the haggling goes, boy, oh boy, mustard, is she? Which begs the question, do we need these two? With your good eye and my amazing bargaining, bargaining skills, we've got a whole new career ahead of us. A whole new career? <laughs> you and me on the road, Thelma Louise. I'd be Susan Sarandon. Maybe Gina Davis. Whichever was the one that had sex with Brad Pitt. I say. Well, that's all sorted then. First. Here we go. Here we are. They're very racy, aren't they? Look at these very ladies. Racy. racy. Quick. <laughs> it's all about speed. Is it? Stay morning. in the car. Stay in the car. Okay. Speed. I'm staying. Thank Good you. Good morning to you. Good morning. Yes. While they're chatting. Let's go. Let's get let's on the go. road. Let's <laughs> go. Quick, quick, first See of the shot. Indeed. <laughs> Later, they'll be herring off to an auction in Brighton, but today's first whistle stop is in the Gloucestershire town of Sarancester. Bit of a shared shop. Sounds friendly enough, doesn't it? I'm over the moon. I'm very confident. I love the things we bought. You know what I need, don't you? I need to win. I know you need to win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's no second place here, right? Crikey. What about the others? Let's do haggling today. Yeah, haggling. The whole of North Africa will be weeping <laughs> for lack of haggling. The whole of Liverpool will be weeping at mine yeah. because I'm from the mentality of everything comes off the back of a lorry. Well, they've been buying and selling in this market town since Roman times, so I'm sure our lot can be accommodated. Look at Is this it? Yes. Good. But who got there first? Just through here. Oh, I reckon those, those voices. Oh, dear. Oh. Avoiding you. Have you found something? Have you found of course yet? we have. Okay. Oh, well, well, many choices. We're off. We're we're off. off. Bye then. Was there enough bluster on show there, do you think? West German vases. They're very good, aren't they? Nice colours. Very unusual. A vase with a handle. It Never is. seen yeah. that before. Vase with a handle might also be known as a jug. A jug. <laughs> Bracker's nosy stuff. Quality wooden box with silver cartouche. 1937. That's cigarette. actually a really lovely present, because if you got it engraved, yeah. yeah. Cigarette box, but it's just all ready to go, isn't ready it? Ready to go, yeah. That could be what fifteen quid. That might be a fellow, mightn't it? That smells like a gentleman from Piccadilly, doesn't it? How do you know? Uh, As our other couple. Aha, uh -huh. Tina. Have you found something? So I know you like glass. Yes. So I'm gonna. I, I've got a little question for oh, you. Here's a little tester. Okay. Right. What does it remind you of? Uh, a Scarf. Very good. It's actually a handkerchief vase. Handkerchief. And oh. in the 1920s, 1930s, these were made and they're called, oh, there we go. Large. Handkerchief, handkerchief vase. vase. It's a handkerchief vase, yeah. Oh, and wow. they did them in all different colours. It's not, the, it's not the value of it, no. it's just the unusual shape. And I mean, that at £28? Nothing, is it? Not to be sniffed at, but Tina's thinking big. I've got £275 in my back pocket. I'm desperate to spend it. Uh, I've just got to make sure it's the right object. Quite. Meanwhile... That is um, an, an Ashanti stool. So uh, the Ashanti tribe used to carve these stools. It's a very... Uh, 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 that sort of shape. The Ashanti come from central Ghana. Oh, yes, it's lovely, isn't it? It is sweet, isn't it? It's it quite stylised. Mm. It's quite an elegant elephant. It's got... it's very good. Very good. It's got very extended lean. legs. Very isn't lean it? and long, yeah. Sort of modelly legs. Yeah, yeah. That's at fifty pounds would be good. We make a profit on that. Currently, almost twice that, however. Ooh. Steady. Nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> I think the price might be going up. Nah, what's in here? Ah, that's quite nice. Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad. That frame is Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau is really in yes, at the moment. Yeah. Ticket price is £78. I think that's lovely. So do I. Maybe you should hide it and we'll come back to it later. What do you think? Ooh, OK, I don't want them to see it, so I no. really want to hide it. 
This, I like it. That's a lovely let's mirror. Let's put that up there. <laughs> I wonder if they've got a blanket we could throw over it as well. <laughs> no, I think that's enough. Sneaky tactics, I like it. James? Yep? What do you think of this bowl? You're drawn to these deco shapes, well, aren't you? Well, it's chic, isn't it? It's very, it's very chic, chic, very clean. Ah, Orifor Sweden. Orifor Sweden, is that yeah, what they're, it Yeah, they're, they're a big, uh, sort of, a, a very smart design house, glass. But is it modern, then? I'm, I think it's quite modern. It's still got a, quite a modern label, but it's a luxury good. To make glass, you have to melt sand to 1,600 degrees centigrade. Through my fan there, I can see where it's signed. Look. Yeah, it's signed, it's got a nice label, it's got everything going for it. The price is... £65. Ow, 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 ow. Doesn't it? But also, I want the elephant. Well, let's see what we oh, can do. Hello, young man, how are you? Lovely to meet you. We like the bowl. Mm-hmm. But we don't like the price tag. Do you know what that could be done for? How does £50 sound to you guys? Yeah. Too much. Too much. Too much still. 35 35 Oh, I'd go lower. So that would be the absolute best. 35 what? 35 I'd shake the man's hand. Would you? What? Would not Maybe go for 30. 30 You told me to go for 30 Sorry. My friend, my rival, is a really good haggler, and I have failed miserably. You Haggling. can save my life. You're in a haggle. Yeah, go on, then. Do it for 30. 30. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you made my day. Well, there's a will, eh? Am I allowed to buy the elephant stall? Well, depending on how well you negotiate. Under 50. It's got to be under it's, it's... 40, I would have thought. Remember the ticket price? 99. Do it at 45. That's the best I can 45. do. 45. Go on, Will. Put it there, Chief. Well done. Do you want me to hug him for you? Yeah, kiss him. <laughs> kiss the other man. Kiss him. Oh, haggling and hugging. A little Dear. plastic fibre. And that's perfect. Oh. Now, any danger of Tina splashing out? This is a lovely cabinet. Isn't I like it? This. Some, yeah. You've got some Vesta cases, haven't yes, you, from I your have. dad? I mean, look at that lovely cigarette. Cigar box. That's a cigar one. And that one there is just a little cheroot case. Cheroot, what would they put in there? Little cigars. Oh, look down here, Tina. There's a lovely set of uh, Art Nouveau silver buttons. Oh, yes. oh, they are lovely. And you know we were talking about the frame earlier? Yes. I they think could, they could the go together? Yeah, the frame and those could go together. 95. The 95. Should we have a look at them? Yes, okay. yes. I think those are gorgeous. These look like they're in their original box. Mm -hmm. They're dated 1903. I think that these are a classic piece. So do I. Let's go and negotiate. Yeah, definitely. OK, first, we need to retrieve that frame. Still there. <laughs> Next, manager Brian. We really need your help here, <laughs> because... Sure we can do something. We love this. We could do those for 80 for you. Right, and what about my lovely frame? And your frame is 78. Um, we could do that for 65 for you. Brian, ideally, yeah, we're looking around £100. Oh, gosh. Um, how about 120 <laughs> Why don't we split the difference? That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. You're happy with 110? Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very Brian, much. Thank you well, very that was fruitful. Money? Well, money? Oh, we've got to pay him. We've got to pay the man. <laughs> I thought I could get away with a smile. Nice try, Tina. But what about Sharon and James? What's the pathway to acting? Well, the only way through for me was to apply for drama schools. And so I applied for the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, RADA. 30 shillings you paid for an audition. Two, two speeches, one Shakespeare, one modern, but I'm crying down the side of the chair going, yeah. nothing, 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 not even my own soul. Two weeks later, I got a letter saying you've been accepted at RADA, and poverty was a massive advantage because I got a full grant. Currently resting from their shopping duties, those two are crossing into Oxfordshire and the village of Kelmscott. Have you ever worked with your husband, Trevor Eve? Only once. Recently, we were asked to appear in a version of Pygmalion at um, Buckingham Palace in front of the Queen. I did not play Eliza. I yeah. played the housekeeper, and he played Professor Higgins. It was in the investiture room, and it was like doing it in somebody's front parlour. It was very Fabulous. funny and a real privilege. It was very exciting. This is Kelmscott Manor, where they're about to learn the story of the fair lady who some believe was the inspiration for Pygmalion's Eliza Doolittle. Quiet little nook. In the company of Victorian art expert Jan Hello. Marsh. <laughs> I'm Jan. I'm Sharon. Uh, nice to meet you. James. Nice to meet you. And welcome to Kelmscott Manor. Thank you. Thank you. This Elizabethan home was leased as a country retreat by the great artist and designer William Morris and his friend, the painter and poet Dante Gabriel Rossetti. 
So is this all original? Yes, this is, house has hardly changed since the Morrises were here. But the other person closely associated with Kelmscott is the pre-Raphaelite model, Jane Burden. She grew up in Oxford. She came from a very impoverished and ill-educated family. So when she met pre-Raphaelite artists at the age of 17, mm. she fell absolutely head over heels, not just with them, but with the whole Lifestyle. atmosphere of art and culture. In the little room by the side, there is the first drawing that Rossetti ever did of Jane, age 17. And you can see how he has made probably a very plain lass into an absolutely beautiful young woman. It was Rossetti who first discovered Jane, but Morris who married her in 1859. She was obviously one of those very bright working class lasses yes. who, yeah. when she sees an opportunity, she absolutely seized Grab it. it. Don't yes. Get it, come twice. it was like a Cinderella, it was like Pygmalion. Pygmalion. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. It totally changed her. Her life. Is there a truth in the fact that Liza Doolittle might loosely have been based on Jane, do you think? Well, well it's quite possible because Bernard Shaw, who wrote Pygmalion, yes, knew, here, the, knew the Morrises, came here, and so he knew the story about how Janey had been plucked from obscurity and she was reinvented as a lady, as Mrs William Morris. Where real life differs, however, is in the complicated relationship between husband, wife and their friend Rossetti. On the wall here is his first oil portrait of Jane. And it says along the top, famed for her poet husband, famed for her beauty, and now let her be famed for my painting. <laughs> he was never very modest, Rossetti. <laughs> <laughs> and he painted and drew that face over and over again in different guises. It was his ideal. It's a bit wistful, isn't it? So Rossetti's painting the wife of his friend and making her look rather melancholy. And then within a few months, you're declaring your love for her. And you think he's made her look sad because their affections can never blossom. When the attachment between the two became obvious, Morris and Rossetti acquired Kelmscott in 1871. Up this wonderful Jacobean staircase. But while William took himself to Iceland for the summer, Jane and Gabrielle furnished the house together. So this is the room that uh, Rossetti took for his painting studio, and Morris's bedroom is next door, and Jane's bedroom is just beyond that. It was an arrangement to, to, for propriety's sake. What an understanding husband. Yes, <laughs> he loved the house. It was also a perfect house for a hideaway for Jane and Gabriel to be together. It's got a wall garden. No prying eyes. Very sophisticated crowd. Was this a lifelong relationship? Not home? really, it didn't last all that long. Two, three years, and then Rossetti had a breakdown and he eventually went back to London and then the Morrises took on the house. Was Jane involved in Morris & Co in the business? Oh, very actively from the very beginning. She actually ran and organised the embroidery side of the business and she became an absolutely renowned embroiderer and there are quite a lot of examples of her work still here. So she really had quite an active career. Rossetti died in 1882, and Morris himself 14 years later, but Jane and her daughters kept Kelmscott. This iconic house, which features on the cover of Morris's News from Nowhere and is glimpsed in Rossetti's 1871 painting of Jane, remains a finely preserved memorial. Meanwhile, back in Gloucestershire, Tina and Raj are on their way to their final shop. And of course, we do have a slight advantage because this is your home patch. That's right, yes. We're off to Tetbury, and I actually got married in Tetbury oh, 10 really? years ago. There's one shop where I have bought a lot of uh, antiques in the past, so I'm hoping he might be there today and I might be able to use some sort of charm. Works both ways, mind you. A bit like the road to Tetbury. That's the church where Tina was wed, all right? Because you know this place. I do, that's <laughs> George's shop. Definitely not your usual antique shop. Hello, George. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you again. How are you? We're great. Right. Thank Hello, you. George. Nice Rod. To meet you. Nice to meet you. What a lovely shop you have here. He does, and Tina has £165 left, remember? Very interior designy pieces, aren't they? I mean, George has obviously got a connection with India. And these are quite nice, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, these are nice old painted brackets. Very 
Very nice. Oh, and heavy. heavy. Super right. heavy. Oh. oh, go on. The teak brackets. Anglo Indian. Six hundred pounds for the set. And they're nice, but you'd want the set, wouldn't you? And six hundred's yeah. a bit steep. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's plenty more. These are lovely old patterns. Do you know what these are yeah. for? They were for paint, printing. Absolutely. You would have a uh, sari, for example. They would take that piece, yeah. put it into the paint, yeah. uh, and then decorate the bottom of the sari. But that's an interesting one. That's an old roti stone. That would have been heated, and you would make the chapati, mm. slap it on the stone, cook it on the stone, and then ready to go. Yummy. Now, he looks tasty. Oh, Tina, look at this. Yeah, look at him. Isn't that a nice lump? It's, oh, it's so heavy. Is it? It's, oh. uh, it looks to me like I think it's pronounced Suret. That's the uh, sun it? god. The sun god. The sun god. I like that. So do I. That is so different. I wonder what price is on it. 400? It could, do you know? It could be. It could be 250, 200. But we've got 165 pounds left. Yeah. I mean, I'd pay. Might be 150. Would you? I mean, how old it is, I wouldn't like to bet on it, but it does look old to me. Let's ask. Does him. it? George. Hi, George. Hi, Tina. We love the look of that. Well, it's a, a big brass bronze suret, and it's a sun god, an interpretation of the sun god. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the creator of the universe, 19th stroke 20th century. Not ancient, but a nice old piece. But it's very decorative. It's a nice big lump, Solid as they say. Piece. Yeah. Now the million dollar question. How oh, much is it? 220 I've got on it. Ah, oh, 220. It's a little bit more than, uh, sure, sure. than we were hoping to pay. Cut to the chase, what, what's available? Our offer, we've discussed it. Would you take 150 pounds? Cash. We have a deal. Thank you very Thank much you very indeed. Much. Thank you. George, they've got it. So here we go. Thank you very much indeed. Great, I hope you do well with it. I second that. I'm coming. This is Come on! <laughs> this is a heavy. Where'd you it's... park the car? Oh, it's down there. <laughs> Blimey. So we're shopping oh. done. Let's make an appointment for a full and frank disclosure. Ooh, I love this bit. On the counter, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh. Ah. Uh-huh. Glass is well represented. Oh, they're very cool. I they're like very it. They cool, are cool, aren't they? Aren't they? Very cool. They completely took my eye. Tell me about the glass bowl. Is that uh, that looks rather new. modern? It's quite new, Orifor, Swedish. Signed. Okay. Signed. 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 That's why we bought it. A bit Brighton, we thought. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's Brighton. close to Stockholm, yeah. Cheeky Raj. You'd okay. never guess what that is. What is it's it? A, is it a vine it's for vinegar? Oil. Oil, oil of vinegar? He's no. never seen one before. And obviously neither of you. Go on, take the money. It's Georgian. It's a bird feeder for a bird cage. A little lady with a little budgery gar. You're right. I lovely? have never seen one before. Do you like it, though, Raj? It was, it's a good story. What have you got here? What are these? These the, prints? The three prints of Brighton. They're Views Brighton. Brighton. Oh. oh. So we got the table told you. <laughs> <laughs> the auction's been changed. No. We're going to see Norwich. Glasgow. <laughs> you are in trouble. <laughs> That's but very good. That is brilliant. Very, very, very good. Nice. Why is no one talking about him then? Well, uh, elephant seat. That's uh, a, a, a shanty tribe, I think. It's a refined elephant with very long, lean, it's got fat legs. legs. Mm. I like an elephant with long legs. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Go on, show us your Here we go. Hang on a second. God, <laughs> look at that. There's some stuff going on <laughs> there. Here we go. <laughs> Who is that rather strange <laughs> fellow in the middle? This is the Indian sun god. Nice. Sure. Oh, OK. Nice. Yes. It's got some age to it. Yeah. It's very, very decorative and unusual. Is it heavy? Very. It's very heavy. Well, it's very lovely. And in the right situation, if somebody can carry it out, if somebody's trying yeah. to carry it out, I think it'll do fine. And you've got a barbershop quartet. We could open a barbershop <laughs> here. <laughs> well. We said yeah. it would go very well. That's an, an army 1944. It's all in, engraved. That's oh, lovely. World it's War really II nice. One. And I love the lamp. Poison. They're very, very trendy at the moment. Yeah. And uh, it's it's original. Look at this. <laughs> I know, they're lovely. lovely. Now, what are these? Art Nouveau, Nouveau yeah. buttons. Silver buttons. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. Really lovely. nice. Very pretty, aren't very they? Very pretty, yes. And that comes with an Art copper Nouveau frame. copper frame. You're going to go with one, one lot. That's one lot. Oh, it's one lot. One lot. Oh. Yeah. And more militaria. This is very our, special. This is our very That's special. So you, you went for a, a piece of um, clothing. Yeah. It's actually the Royal Gloucesters. Oh, Gloucester. It's a drummer's Tiny. jacket. Nice. Very, yeah. And they're very trendy, especially yeah. in Brighton. Yeah. The Brighton. youngsters like wearing them when they go out. Who told you that? 
<laughs> She's got a point. I feel really happy having seen yours now. I feel... <laughs> no, 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 no. What I mean is it now, it's now going to be a pleasure, cos, yeah. you know, it'll be lovely. Yeah. The hard work's done. Come on. We'll, we'll see you at the auction. You. We will see you at the auction. Yeah. Oh, Come on. See you there. <laughs> As we were revealed, I was very impressed. Were you? I think yeah. it looked like a great collection. <laughs> I think you've surprised them with your fabulous little bird feeder. Their dud buy might be the uh, elephant seat. Any swaps? I can't say I would, actually. Right would answer. You? If I could keep any of our objects, or oh, that would be useful most in my house, it would definitely be the barber's kit. <laughs> <laughs> After getting started in Gloucester and thoroughly exploring the county, our celebrities and experts are now in Brighton. Let's just hope it lives up to expectations. Love being by the sea. You smell it, can't you? You can. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Volvo wasn't at all well this morning, so with the Sherbet dab <laughs> taking the strain, these two can concentrate on more important matters. So who would you say is the most competitive, Sharon? Fancy you asking me that question. <laughs> the thing about you, Tina, is you say you're really competitive, but what you don't know about me is I am quietly very competitive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually think I'm going to win. I really do, because, let's face it, mine is much more tasteful than yours, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> well, I'm blaming Raj for that. that. Welcome to Brighton General. Sounds a bit like a hospital, so they Hello. may well feel at home. How are you? Nice to see you. Lovely to see you, too. Hi, Joe. There's internet bidding Lovely here, to too. Let's go and do this. Come on to see you. Let's go and see what's going to happen, then. James and Sharon picked up five auction lots, and Tina and Raj did exactly the same. Now, I wonder what our auctioneer, Andrew Potter, makes of them. Is he completely potty about them or not? The 1940s hair cream dispenser, that should be the star item today. There's lots of barber shops opening up around the place. A lot of interest on the internet on that, so I'm expecting that to sell very well today. The Gloucestershire Regiment's jacket. It's a bit steampunkish, so you can see people around Brighton walking around the streets wearing that sort of thing. Yep, I see what you mean. <laughs> Raj did have a point. Well, lot 15 very good. The three very, uh, very excited. There. First on parade is Tina and Raj's military barber's kit. Oh, here okay. we go. Yeah, this is the one we want this to do well. <laughs> I've got interest on the butt. I can start this at uh, 26 28 oh, I've got £30 pounds now with me, looking for 32 I've got £30 pounds with me. Is there 32 anywhere? All done at £30. Oh, started with a profit. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Good start there and a tidy reward. Tenner. Tenner's a tenner. That's 50% of what we paid for it. That's not bad. That's very good. We'll be all right, James. Yeah. Packet and profit or trunk junk. It's James's favourite. And what did you pay for it, James? £45. Pounds. Cheap, at price, yeah. Cheap at the price, darling. Cheap at the price. I can start on the net at £44, pounds, looking for 46 now. I've got 44 got Sorry. 46 got 48, 48. 48. Got 50. I've got 50 now, I've got 55. Oh. I've got 55. Oh. I've got 55. Is it going mad in here or what? I've got 55 on the net, looking for 60 now. I've got 55 on the net. Is there 60 anywhere? I've got 55 on the net. You can't beat yourself or you get into trouble. So illegal. Did it? Morn, you have been warned. 55 on the net, looking for 60 now. All done at 55. Got 60, 65. Oh, to oh. oh dear. I've got 65 on the net, looking for 70 now. I've got 65 on the net. Is there 70 anywhere? Got 70 on the net, looking for 75. We're going to have a right in here in a minute. I've got 70 on the net. Is there 75 anywhere? All done at 70 pounds. Well done. No. Hey. Well done, James. Well done. Yeah, nicely spotted. What a good start for us. I think it's all right for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we start off slow and build up. Well, let's see if their buttons and frame can do the same. You spent a lot of money on these. We did. We spent a lot of money. £110. That's good. I can start the book at £40. I've got 42 on the net. Gorgeous. 44, 46. 
Looking for 48. We've got 48. I'll come to the room shortly. Keep I've got going. 50 it's on right. the right. 55 right. on the net. Keep going. 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 Keep I've got really 70 lovely. pounds in the room, it's looking for 75. Oh, yes, yes. I've got 75, I've got 80 pounds. Oh, so 85, <laughs> you 90, yeah. you 95. Okay, stop now, I've got 90 stop pounds joking standing now. Stop. at the Come back on. of the room. Is there 95 anywhere? Come on. I've got 95, he's back in. Would you like 100? Yes. I've got 100 in the room. Oh, I've yes. got 110 now. Come on, come I'm on. done at 100 oh. pounds. Oh. Oh. That's oh. not bad, though. That's very good. I thought it was going to sell for 50. <laughs> Cheeky. This is shaping up to be quite a contest. It's a lot, but not bad for a load of rubbish. Not a lot. We don't like as a team, we do not like making losses. Next, we have Sharon's Swedish bowl. Not terribly old. No, but very beautiful. 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 Very um, I can start the book. I've got 26, 28. I've got 30 now with me. Yeah, Looking okay. for 32 now for the Orifors. I've got 30 pounds with me. Is there 32 anywhere? I've got 32 now on the net. Looking for 34. I've got 32 on the net. Is there 34 anywhere? I will sell it at 32 pounds. Sold to the net for 32 pounds. Two quid. That's slim. Still, every little bit helps. Quite. Nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah. I'm proud. Yeah, we haven't lost no yet. No crying in the audience, please. <laughs> Can the glorious Gloucesters come to Tina and Raj's assistance? I really yeah, like this, and I think this is where we're going to come marching back. Do you want to buy it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 26, 28 on the net, looking for 30. We've got 28 on the net. Is there 30 anywhere? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Position. We've got 30 got now on the net. Come on. Is there 32 anywhere? Anywhere. I've got yes. 30 on the net. Looking I think for he's struggling. I've got Come 34 on. now. 34. Is there 36 anywhere? I've got 34 now. He's looking for 36. Oh, yes. 36 on the net. 38. Got 38. Oh, Come on. Come on. I've got 38 on the net. I've got 40 now. I will sell it no. at 38 no. pounds. Oh. No. Sell it. Sell it. It's all right, Raj. Right. Your reputation won't, won't die on this. Me. Yes, come on, Raj. Chin up. I'm just going to go around saying, I've got an idiot. An idiot, Raj. Miss Ram. A big test for James next. His Brighton engravings. If they don't do well here, the they won't do well anywhere. anywhere. I know, to be honest. Six, They're going to do well. Ten, Let's hope 12, you just make a small lot. The <laughs> Very nice pieces there. We've got uh, 22, 24 on the net. 26 Whoa. now, looking for 28. Keep going, keep going. I've got 28, I've got 30, I've got 32, 34, yes. 36. 38, yes. 40, I've got 40 pounds at the front, looking for 42, got 42, 44, 46, oh, this is 48, nice. 50, yeah. 55, nice. 60, 65, now I've got 60 pounds, 65, 60 pounds to my left, is there 65 anywhere? Come on, come I will sell them keep at going. 60 pounds. No. Oh. 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 Did you gloat? Stop no, it. no, no. I think they definitely did, Sharon. Yes, right. Uh, the gloves uh, the are off. Is, like, <laughs> if, if, if we've gloated, <laughs> the gloves are off. Were you gloating? I don't, I don't oh, know. I just couldn't hold my excitement. I know. Yeah. Well, it's your son, God, next, Tina. Are those two related, by the way? Yeah. Fingers crossed. The sun is shining out. No, it's not. It's cloudy. Oh, dear. This lady behind me fancies it for her garden. How much? I've got bids up to 85, 90. Oh, hey. I've got 95 with me. Is this it? Looking yeah. for 100. I've got 95 with me. Gorgeous. For this plaque, it's rather heavy, large yeah. plaque. Somebody's I've got 95 with me. I can see the internet hovering. I've got 100 at the yeah. back of the room. I've got 110 now with me. Yeah. Looking yeah. for 120. Yeah. Yeah. I've got 110 on the book. Is there 120 on, on, anywhere? Yeah. I, I will that's sell it. That's enough. That's enough, Sharon. That's enough. Sorry to gloat. Sorry to gloat. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, sorry to gloat. Oh, oh. It's like Harby City all over again. 
A lamp better come no. through. Well, no. <laughs> a dodgy <laughs> lamp. <laughs> you're in, <laughs> you're in <laughs> trouble. You don't know this woman's wrath. But before that, we have Sharon's big buy, the hair cream dispensers with provenance. It's, it's my Sharon's. pride and joy. I'm very proud of my dispensers. Yeah. Do you like to wear some tissues? No, no, you, I, you cannot touch me. You cannot touch me. I have the faith. Keep them because you'll be weeping. Yeah. <laughs> I've got uh, 65, I've got 70 on the net. Looking for 75, got 75, got 80, 80. got 85, got 90, got 95, got 100. Do you want 110? 20. I've got 110, 120 on the net. The internet's taking over. 130, 140, oh, wow. 150, well 160. Well you don't see these very often. No, they never. are very rare. Never. They are glass. Never. I've got 160 on the net. Looking oh. for 170 now. I've got 160, 170, oh, 180 wow. anywhere. I've got 170 on the net. It's all these for 180. I will sell it very at 170 don't, don't pounds. Don't linger. Pounds. Linger. So to the next one. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah, slick work there, Sharon. Goodbye. Well done. Good That's a good profit. Yeah, thank you. That's a really good profit. Are you feeling it? Yeah. Don't let them have a week of it. She's got an uphill struggle now, Raj. Well, it'll take one heck of a profit from Raj's lamp to swing it. Here we go. Oh, here we, here go. we are. Here we go. Uh, yeah. hey. oh, nice. I've got 20. I've got 22 now on the net. Looking for 24. I've got 24. I've got 26. I've got 28. I've got 28. I've got 30. I've got 32. I've got 32. 34 on the net. Looking for 36. I've got 34 on the net. I've got 34. I did. I'm moving the I will sell it at 34. <laughs> Head bowed, it seems. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what have we Hello, done? James. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Something... Finally, Sharon's bird feeder. Can I say she got it cheap? Well, You've never no. seen one before. Well, You've never seen one before. before. I've never seen one before. I've got £10 with me, looking for 12 now. These usually break, so they are rare. I've got 12 at back of the room, looking for 14. I've got 12 at back of the room. Is there 14 anywhere? I get it. I will what sell it at <gasps> 12 easy, pounds. Easy. No. That's so very sorry. disappointed in this audience. <laughs> oh, well, a minor blip. Some big profits there. Yeah, highs and lows, isn't it? Yep, up and down. Let's find out how it worked out. What do we think? Do you have any idea, Raj? No. Yourself? <laughs> Not really, no. I think he does. OK, let's get down to business, then. Tina and Raj started out with £400, and after auction costs, they made a loss of £129.16. So they end up with £270.84p. Sharon and James, who began with the same sum, made a much smaller loss after costs of £17.92. So they are our victors with a final total of £382.08. They've become close. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I, I, I feel I let you down. Well, was, but we had fun anyway. Great no, we did. It was, it was well, really fun. I can't oh, help well be done. happy. You. Thank well, you, my darling. <laughs> Thank you. Are you all right, Raj? I am absolutely fine. Are you really, are you really well, happy for me? Yeah, of course I'm happy for you. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Congratulations. Oh, right, come on. Come on, we've got to wave right. them off. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Right, let's go and hail a taxi. Taxi? I don't want to finish. I don't know. I've had such a good time. Uh -huh. Is this one of the most exhausting jobs you've ever done? <laughs>